So, a new Tesla Model S and a new Tesla Model X were just announced. So we're going to cover what's changed, what's different, what can we expect by these changes, and what does 2021 hold for Tesla and these new launches. Uh, that and the investor call is today. So let's get started and cover that. Okay, so Tesla just announced a brand new S, a brand new X, a uh, or refresh as you want to call it, as well as the in earnings call. Now, we're not going to get into the earnings part. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't feel qualified enough to talk about the numbers. But if you're interested in that, uh, you should check out Gally's channel, HyperChange. He was on my channel. We were talking about FSD transferability. So uh, check him out. But let's get into what's been refreshed because I'm super excited about uh, this stuff and what's to be announced. So let's start with the Tesla Model S. Now, the Tesla Model S now is available in three flavors. The long range model, S, the Plaid Model S, and then the Plaid Plus Model S. So the long range Model S is just shy of $80,000 it promises 412 miles, which is incredible. This is the longest range vehicle available. And the estimated delivery time frame is in March. So that's less than you know two months away uh, that we're going to see these on the road. So that means that is the longest range electric vehicle that will be available on the road today or in March when they announce. Now we can jump into Plaid. Now Plaid takes us into a whole new ball game. With Plaid, we're looking at uh, a little bit less range, 390 miles of range, but we're looking at a tri-motor design. And that tri-motor, of course, means a faster vehicle. When we look at the Plaid, we're looking at that zero to 60 at 1.99 seconds. That's the quickest production vehicle available on the road today or in March when the Plaid is available. Now, that Plaid vehicle is going to set you back about 120K. Uh, and then, of course, there is the Plaid Plus. Now, the Plaid Plus is everything that the Plaid has, um, but it's probably going to be utilizing the new 4680 cells. Uh, because of that, we're not going to see production until end of this year in 2021. But now with the Plaid Plus, we're getting some torque vectoring. We're also seeing carbon sleeved rotors uh, brought into this. Uh, but the biggest change is going to be on the performance, which promises 0 to 60 in under 1.9 seconds. And along with that is the range. This is the biggest difference between the Plaid and the Plaid Plus. With the Plaid Plus, with the upgraded battery cells, we're going to see upwards of 520 plus miles. This is crazy range, and this is going to be available at the end of this year. This is before Cybertruck. This is uh, before anything else on the market. You're going to see a 500 plus mile range by the end of this year in the Tesla Model S. Now, now, staying in the configurator on the Model S, there is uh, two options available for wheels. Now, you can go with the standard 19-inch wheels, uh, or you can upgrade to the 21-inch arachnid wheels for $4,500 uh, added onto the top. Now, you'll notice uh, from the exterior, not a lot has changed on the exterior of the vehicle. Um, obviously, the chrome is all gone. It's all now black trim. Now, let's jump into the interior. This is where I was floored. This is the biggest upgrade uh, for the S and the X. This is where everybody wanted was an upgrade to the interior refresh. It's because it's old, it's outdated, and Tesla delivered. Not only did it deliver, but I think personally, I feel they went above and beyond. So let's start with the steering wheel. The steering wheel is this new yoke steering wheel, and it's shown off as... It allows for the ultimate focus on driving. There's no stocks, so there's nothing to shift. And people asked, well, how do you shift? You can actually see capacitative buttons on the steering wheel along with two scroll wheels, similar to the Model 3. But the capacitative buttons are gonna allow you controls for your volume and so forth. And then if you need to shift the vehicle into gear, you have a touch screen for that. So you can touch the screen and, and shift the car into, into gear. That is the steering wheel upgrade. 
Now you'll notice next is the display. The display, uh, the center display has now been moved into a landscape format. We all knew this was coming. The three has it, the Y has it, the Cybertruckers have it, and it looks like it's gonna match the Cybertruck with a 17 inch display. Not only that, is it's super high res. The display, the center display is uh, advertised as 2200 by 1300 uh, ultra brilliant colors with exceptional responsiveness. And I'll want to highlight this is that it will offer tiltability, a left to right tilt, allowing you to kind of angle it towards the driver or angle it towards the passenger. Uh, this is ideal. And then of course, there's a secondary display behind the steering wheel. Those S and X owners that have had it in the past love that. And so it wasn't removed. It's still going to be there. So that's awesome. But Tesla has gone one step further and offered a third display to your rear passengers. This is great for kids in the back that want to game and play. And speaking of gaming, that's exactly what that rear display is going to be pitched as is for gaming or entertainment for those rear passengers, uh, ability to be able to use uh, uh, wireless gaming controllers. This is great for uh, kids or people in the rear. And not only that, it goes into that there is an actual dedicated gaming uh, computer for that rear uh, display, uh, offering up to 10 teraflops uh, of processing power. So that's insane to think about that it's it's a geared this is going to be the ultimate road tripping car uh, let's let's go into what else has changed now from an interior standpoint you'll see it's still offered in a white interior a black interior or a beige interior or cream color now the upgraded interior for white or the uh, cream color does come at a two thousand dollar premium and I will highlight that it doesn't matter if you're looking at black, white, or cream, uh, all the trim interior is gonna be wood. It's just gonna be dependent on if it's a, a darker wood or a more walnut wood or a, uh, yeah, just different shades of wood. The only way to remove the wood completely is to go into the plaid. So when you go into plaid, it does take all of the wood and make it carbon fiber. It just adds more of that sporty look and feel. Now, I don't think the previous S or X had this, but the ability for tri-climate zone is now enabled. So you've got the driver can control their uh, temperature. You've got the passenger that control their temperature. But now the rear uh, passengers now have their own dedicated climate control control offering a tri climate control in both the S and the X. The other thing that seems to be upgraded is the the sound, the audio. So now it's a 22 speaker setup uh, offering 960 watts. That's insane. But what I think is the most exciting part is the new microphones, uh, which will now enable active noise canceling. Now for a hundred thousand dollar car, you do really expect a very quiet interior. And I don't feel like the SRX really had that in the past. And now they're going to have it. And this is not by upgrading the, uh, the glass, making it thicker like some other higher priced cars, but it's by using the technology that's in the car, the microphones to isolate out the sound, similar to how Bose does their noise canceling headphones. So it'll be really exciting to see just how much of a difference this makes. And also regarding the displays, it seems like the, the center display, the main display is going to be a 17 inch display, just like the Cybertruck. The driver's display is going to be a 12.3 inch display. And then the rear passengers are going to have an eight inch display. Another thing that seems to have made a, uh, a comeback is in ventilated seats. So both the S and X are going to now offer ventilated seats. That used to be something offered in the past. It went away. We saw it again. It went away. In the most recent builds, I don't think Tesla had ventilated seats as an option, but now they're back. And this is huge, especially in a road tripping car. You want to make sure that your vehicle offers the best comfort. And this is going to add that. I know for me, when I'm driving, I get hot. I would love to have ventilated seats. Uh, and so I'm glad that they've brought that back in both the S and the X. It also looks like all the charging ports have been upgraded to USB-C. So that's awesome and gets with the times like the three and the Y. But I also like how Tesla's integrated wireless charging both to the front of the vehicle as well as the rear of the vehicle. So really great, these convenience features and not having to have cords laying around and looking all messy. Now jumping into the Model X, uh, as far as what's offered there, you do have two options on the Model X, a long range and then a plaid, that's right. It, it was never talked about before about a Model X going plaid because do you really need it? But 
Elon delivered, Tesla delivered, there's a Model X Plaid now. So when looking at these two, the Model X long range is gonna be about $83,000 and offer 360 miles. And then of course, you have the option to go Plaid for about 113,000, uh, taking a little bit of a hit on the range down to 340. Uh, but it's the first SUV that can go zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds that's insane a family suv being able to go zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds is crazy but plaid can do it and then regarding the interior between the model s and x they're the same the only thing is is on the model x you can of course configure it as a five six or seven seater those are all still available now, what does this all mean? Obviously, hardware refresh is great. It's cool seeing the new and seeing the, the cars, you know, updated and look great and, and awesome internally. But what does it mean, you know, for Tesla? So, well, there are a couple things that I want to highlight. Number one is that rear screen for passengers. Uh, it's not just a display. There's actually a computer behind it, a computer with 10 teraflops of processing power. Now, the, the games that are in the car today don't really require that much power. So that leaves to be answered is what do you need all that power for? Is Tesla looking at uh, having a gaming app store? Could they invite companies like Insomniac or, uh, you know, or these big gaming companies to develop games specifically for that kind of hardware? 10 teraflops is a lot of power. And so it only could mean amazing games. I do want to call your attention to the screenshot. The screenshot that shows The Witcher on an app store-like screen. Now, when talking about The Witcher, The Witcher is a game uh, by a company, uh, CD Projekt Red. You probably know of them because they also made uh, Cyberpunk, which has been all over the news lately. But The Witcher was a very uh, good game. It got great praise and good reviews from uh, gaming community members. And so uh, it's very exciting to see that these kind of games now have the ability uh, and will have the ability to come into the vehicle. And so that opens up a whole new can of worms and another, you know, area where Tesla could look at, you know, really offering games. Could they charge for these games? Could you buy them? You know, hey, I'm buying The Witcher for my Tesla that enables me to have it in my car, another revenue stream. So the possibilities are endless here. Just thinking about just gaming as another platform uh, where Tesla could uh, create a revenue stream on. Uh, it's... It's crazy to think about, but I want to focus your guys' attention on that. That is a tidbit uh, that I wanted to call attention to that I think is really important when thinking about Tesla and thinking about the future at what they could be doing here and gaining from. The other thing that I want to call attention to is if you look at the screen display on uh, where they talk about the uh, cabin airflow system, um, obviously you can see it's modeled after the 3 and Y with the you know ventless design, really bringing it into the new age. Um, but Take a close look at the UI. That is a UI that we have not seen before. Uh, however, it was, it's the same UI from Cybertruck launch. It's the exact same UI. And so that's a hint and a nod to that we could be seeing this new UI coming this year. Um, obviously, if they're showing it running on the Model S and X in these photos, uh, means that it's gotta be right around the corner. Now, as being an FSD beta tester, I don't even have that on the FSD beta test. So um, this looks like to be the next UI overhaul coming for uh, Tesla this year. So it's something we can all look forward to. Um, and that's really exciting to see that a whole new UI, I feel like we just got a UI refresh, but a whole new UI is right around the corner uh, that takes after the uh, Cybertruck design. So second uh, neat thing to kind of call out uh, that we could learn from these images. And then if you look at the earnings report, you'll notice uh, that there is an installed annual capacity where they're kind of planning out where, um, you know, where models of cars will be built. Um, but you'll notice that under TBD, 
uh, they mention the semi, they mention the roadster, and then they mention a future a product. Uh, this is most probably the 25k Tesla. Uh, these are all three TBD. I was hoping that you know we would at least see semi, you know, uh, understood where that's going to be built this year, um, and hoping to see deliveries this year, but uh, maybe not. But what we can look forward to is Cybertruck um, and and more, you know, and more on the Model Y coming out of Berlin and Texas. Uh, but it's very exciting to see that we could understand that, you know, what's the future product, that TBD, where is it going to be built at? You know, I think it's going to be built overseas. Uh, you know, a smaller vehicle, a sub 25K car is really going to make sense, uh, you know, in, in, in Shanghai, in China, uh, in, uh, you know, in Germany, in, in the European countries, those smaller vehicles make sense. And then also we know that Tesla is coming to India. Uh, India is a great country where a 25K car makes sense. So this is awesome. As we're looking at 2021 and we're looking at the future, I see a lot of really great potential as far as vehicles. We've got 2021 to be excited for. We've got uh, SNX to be super excited for for 2021. We've obviously still are pushing out Y. We're still pushing out 3. And then at the end of 2021, hopefully, Elon said that if they push really hard, they could get a couple Cybertruck deliveries, but Cybertruck will be coming out in 2022. That's exciting. The 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 gigafactories that are still yet to be finished uh, over in, in Texas and Berlin. So there's a lot to be excited for on the hardware side. There's a lot to be excited on the software side, the idea of gaming coming to your Teslas. I mean, it's insane. And But seeing that the S and X have now joined the ranks of the 3 and Y, you really feel like you're getting what you paid for in these vehicles with a lot more premium features. So I'm excited about that. Let me know in the comments, are you going to get this new, uh, you know, S and X? It's a little bit outside of my price uh, range. I think I would more look at, you know, maybe a, a Y, but let me know what you think. Are you excited about these hardware changes? Did you even think about what effect it has on a software side for the business for Tesla? Uh, let me know, let me know down in the comments if you like this kind of video. Um, you know, I'll make more uh, videos like this. And special thanks to all of my members. Uh, shout out to you guys. You guys know who you are. Hit this video with a thumbs up if you liked it, if you liked, you know, the little bit of, of tidbits that I chimed in on. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are too. What a great a start to the year. 2021 is looking good for Tesla and its owners. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.